Hey, how's it going? This is Drawn Smiles. Now let's go and have some fun. Alright, is everyone ready? Time for the museum. Okay, this is the museum. Oh, it's Teddy! Oh, we just ran extra fast. Hey, and welcome to Teddy's grand, uh, I mean, the museum of Among the Sleep. Yeah. Anything else? Go on. Take a look around. Uh, okay. I'm pretty sure this is just... Yeah. Just the art. Yeah, it's just random pages of how they made this game and stuff. What is this? Radio. Carry me. How many do they got? Oh, man. It keeps going. Oh. I'm not going to play them just in case they're copyrighted. Man, we running. <coughs> Man, we running. Oh, no, I fell. Oh, it's all right, though. What did they give this baby? Before we explore all that, let's explore upstairs. How's it going, Teddy? Man, they gave him, like, an adrenaline shot or something, like in Left 4 Dead 2. He's just zooming. What did they do to this baby? Yep, this is the room where are the drawings that he made. So I'm gonna guess that was his. That's his mom. I don't know if that's supposed to be him or the dad. And then this shadowy thing. Yep, the mom and dad fighting. Baby sad. Mom and dad fighting. Yep. Oh, the baby said. The poor baby. Man, he's got uh, he's got a few drawings here, didn't he? All together, he's got like fifty drawings, I think. What is this? The mom throwing up on the ground from being drunk. You had a a father that abused the mother, and you got an alcoholic mother that abused him, and he just wanted their love. Oh, this poor. Baby, the poor baby, I tell you. I just counted these pictures. It says I have 49, so apparently I'm missing one. And this chest is already open. I believe when you collect all 50 of the drawings, it gives you uh, this costume right here. See, it's bananas. Instead of it being the, the moon and stars, it's bananas. Did you know that you can collect hidden drawings throughout the game? Yes. What picture am I missing? If you do, they will appear here in this room. Maybe this. Pretty sure I got them all. How'd I miss there one? There might even be a reward if you can find them all. I'm pretty sure I already got it. It's just uh, bananas. It's the bananas. Yeah. Oh, well. All right, let's go explore some more. But, uh, I'm pretty sure it just gives you this, which I already got. And here. The prologue was added as a free DLC a couple of months after release of the game. It was made in collaboration with some of our fans, and made to elaborate a little bit on what went wrong with the parents' relationship. That the mother was not simply evil, but rather that relationships are tough, and neither of the parents handled it well. I will agree with you on that. Both parents should have talked it out more and should have worked on it more. But at the same time, there's no excuse for her physically abusing the baby. You shouldn't be abusing the baby. We wanted to approach the prologue chapter differently than the rest of the game by making the environment open instead of a linear path. The players are free to explore the house in the order and pace they choose themselves. Okay, that's nice. What you guys say? Oh, you're home. Of course. The team wanted to start with introducing the character of the mother, as well as the mechanics of the game. Starting with the kid's birthday was a way to both introduce Teddy in the form of a gift and showing how old the kid is. Okay. These are screenshots taken from the old house. When night falls over the home is when you really start seeing the ways in which the child perceives reality while scared. 
A large part of the game is based on how children see and interpret what's happening around them. Okay, I thought you were done talking, but you're not. You take your time saying the next sentence, don't you? These are screenshots taken from the old house back when the project was a bachelor thesis in school. The idea behind the layout was pretty much similar, but had a few deviations from the current one. Okay. Oh, wait, wait, what was this? Another old concept piece from the year we prototyped the game back in school. This one from the living room shows both the moonlit mood and the general interior style of the house. We drew these types of concepts before making the house in 3D in order to get a sense of what we wanted the house to look like and make the modeling process faster. Okay. This is the very first concept image for Among the Sleep. Back then, the project was a little bit different and not as clearly defined. Hence, the focus was more on the physical monsters in a more adventure game type of feel. This image was drawn from the inspiration of the exact idea that gave birth to the concept. Okay, so originally it was going to be like a monster uh, adventure game type thing. And they changed it into uh, what it was. Oh, your baby can actually fall? In the museum? Oh, you poor baby. Been abused enough. The playground. Yeah, explain this, please. There's something walking around here, but you never see it. The passive threat keeps you on your toes, and at the same time creates the illusion that you might be safe for the rest of the game. <laughs> How dare you laugh, Teddy? You got an arm ripped off because of this. An early idea for this chapter was that it would feel like a surreal in-between world where you could see other dimensions through openings in the walls and bits of them would seep in. Da -da -da. We scrapped that idea and focused more on the rather lonely and creepy elements of playgrounds, wanting to communicate that the kid had traumatizing memories of being left alone in a playground and subject to the terror of older kids. Oh, so he was being bullied by older kids. He... The older kids most likely locked him up in the shed and stuff. Okay, I see. You poor baby. Getting abused by everything. I'm just kidding. The, uh, the cave chapter has been through a ton of iteration. Since the start of the project, one thing that has remained the same is that there would be a castle to ascend in order to get to the end. And that there would be a musical rainbow colored bridge. The shape and look of the castle itself has changed several times as we had many different plans for the overall gameplay and it morphed along with these changes. So this game was originally being made in their school. It's pretty neat. These are examples of another technique that we use quite often. We take screenshots of the environments and our concept artist draws details and effects like lightning on top of them. This is a cheap way to find out how we want the visuals to end up before starting to produce assets. Early sketches of different ideas for layout environment, details, and lighting. In an earlier iteration of the chapter, we had a huge tree that the players would have to climb in order to get to the memory in the castle. Instead of climbing the tower, the tree was hollow and was covered with drawers on the inside walls. And the gameplay idea was that you had to create a stairway by opening drawers while climbing them. This is an example of a situation where an idea seems really cool until you make it and try it out. It turned out to be way too cumbersome and frustrating, so we scrapped it. We still really loved the idea though. Yeah, it could have been a pretty decent idea. But I understand that some people probably would have got eventually bored of it. Continuously opening up the drawers. This is the forested home. It's a crumbling home that's slowly rotting away into the water and trees. Hmm. Any outside? What is this? This the house oh. here is a symbol of the family and home falling apart. The bloated creature inhabiting it is how the kid sees his mother when she's drinking and full of sorrow. I knew it. They were giving hints throughout the game, so it was kind of obvious. This stump tunnel was unwrapped in the bush. Never again. Let us say we are happy a lot of the game is dark. Okay. To begin with, 
This world was supposed to change form as a result of the puzzles being solved. It would go from a house being just slightly overgrown in places to being completely overgrown and rotted away. There were a bunch of narrative and gameplay reasons for abandoning this idea, but equally important was the fact that it would require us to build two fully separate environments, easily doubling the workload. So we settled on a static mix of these states instead. Basically, it's just too much work for you, huh? <laughs> I'm just kidding. These are some of the first concepts trying out the idea of a transformation in the environment. The map showing before and after. Concepts showing both mood and the idea of the forest consuming the house. Some asset and module design paired with early screenshot paint overs. Oh, on the other side. This wall's got a few. This wall got a bit to say, doesn't it? These images are concept sketches from the painting room, the central hub where you place the puzzle pieces that you find throughout the third chapter. Initially, the idea was to use a golden egg or other artifact to get through a magical door. The players first had to solve a puzzle that would transform the environment of the whole area from a house to a forest so that they could get a hold of the egg that was previously too high for the child to reach. A further iteration of the painting room where solving the puzzle was leading to the chandelier falling and breaking the floor open into a huge chasm leading to the players being able to obtain the golden egg. During creating this we took a few steps back and saw that this whole sequence wasn't based on the child's experiences and was feeling more like a generic puzzle for an adventure game. Therefore this idea also ended up in the bin. You didn't like it. Had to go. And now there's something up here that I gotta read. Wait a minute, what is this? Oh, okay. Another take on the puzzle. Oh, I fell. If only you could jump. All right, I gotta be careful with this. Another take on the puzzle was to untangle an armor from the roots blocking the door. But why would you have armor there? Why would they own armor? When the scene is right boxed and the general layout is set, we do rough black and white sketches or paint overs to articulate the areas in a bit more detail. Since the mood, style, and assets are more or less defined by earlier concepts, we don't need to spend time coloring. From here, we usually iterate within the scene and only draw examples when we need to. On to the next area. For each world the player goes through, the environment illustrates more and more the jumbling together of memories, and this place is a direct illustration of that mess. Most prominently, it's framed by the memory the child has from trying to hide in closets or any nook it can find. The monster in this place represents the mother when she is angry. It comes out when the kid is making a mess. Children make messes sometimes. What are you going to do about it, you know? A key element of this chapter was the claustrophobic feeling of narrow hallways covered with closet doors and being trapped within these. We wanted to have lots of different objects everywhere that could play tricks on your perception of them in dim lighting. The star door has always been a central part of this chapter and has adopted and changed along the way with the many iterations of layout and other changes made during production. At one point during development, there was plans to have a boss battle with Heap, the coat monster found in this chapter. The child was supposed to be trapped in a room with it and had to remain hidden while solving a puzzle to be able to escape. Most things in the game has changed a lot from the beginning of development, but one idea that persisted from when we started planning this chapter was a hallway with flickering lights where a coat would appear and reappear in the distance. Here seen with an early concept to block out phases in the final. Okay. More paint overs of screenshots to figure out how we want the visuals to end up. These are made after implementing simple right box geometry of the level. Is that it? Okay. On to the next room. Ooh, the monster room. Teddy! Teddy, before you- Oh, wait a minute, what's happening here? Oh. Oh, there you have... Uh, me. Or old me, 
as now I'm just a floaty version in your memory, of course. Also, here are all the characters in Among the Sleep, old and new. Some are not used, and some are hard to see because of the various tricks and lighting we did to obfuscate them. You got anything else to say? You usually do, Teddy. Come on, say it. Is that- oh, that was it? Okay. So I'm guessing this is something they were planning on doing and then decided not to do? That's uh, probably for the best. Why would they have a monster coming out of Teddy? Teddy's gotta be his buddy, you know? Something to help ease his mind. Now this one is an old relic. The story and particularly how the game ended was very different in the early days of production. Back then Teddy was the antagonist of the game. The story was that the broken family situation made the child vulnerable and an evil entity, a monster disguised as a friendly teddy bear, took advantage of this by tricking the child onto a dangerous adventure far away from home. During production we realized that we had the choice to either make a typical and predictable horror story or to focus all of the attention on the family situation. Various topics like the these aren't much talked about in video games and we felt compelled to make a creative game around this as we saw the potential to make a much more meaningful story. We scrapped this idea along with a whole chapter and did huge reworks to many parts of the game to make it all come together more neatly. That's probably for the best. You had your own little unique game going on because you did that. Because you made it about the, the family problems. Designing Teddy was a key moment of narrowing down the style. Having a very democratic process to begin with, we all voted for the Teddy we liked best and ended up with a look that was fairly close to the current one. We wanted Teddy to feel like a cozy, warm, and friendly companion, almost grandfather-like, while hinting at the fact that this was the father is beloved Teddy that he had kept patching up and taking care of from his childhood. Ah, uh, so it's the daddy's Teddy that he gave to his son on his birthday. That was nice. Codename, Harold. It's the first monster we created for the game. This was way back when the overall direction was skewed towards a more adventure game. As seen in the very first concept drawing made for the project, Harold was intended to be a physical monster in the first chapter. This worked well as a proof of concept in the demo we made, but during production we realized that it really takes time to build suspense, which is crucial in making monsters feel appropriate and impactful. This is Heap. The coat monster found in the fourth chapter. The whole idea of the chapter is how scary ordinary objects can be in certain situations when you don't see them clearly. We think everyone can relate to having seen the silhouette of something in a dark room and gradually becoming more and more terrified as our imagination does its magic. We applied this directly to the monster when designing it and decided to use a coat as it very much resembles the shape of a person or humanoid creature. Ida is the swamp monster found in the third chapter of the game. We wanted to build a creature around the themes of what might be hiding in forest lakes, which is very related to airy folklore and children's stories we were told growing up. This also allowed us to touch on the themes of alcohol without being too obvious about it. We did this in indirect ways, like the painting of a woman drinking from the well and turning into a monster and giving it a lot of gurgling and wet breathing sounds. The mother was one of the first characters that we designed. Her 3D model was remade and tweaked a few times, but overall she has remained very similar throughout the entire production. The blueprint and model renders is how she looked when it was still a school project. The goal of her design was always to find a look of loving kindness and care for her. Despite her personality transformation and neglect, she never stopped loving her child. Yes, yeah, she loves her child, but she abuses her child, too. You know. Oh, what, what is that? Teddy gun. Teddy was gonna have a gun? What? Sleep. On the outside? What about this? What, what, what type of monster is this? What, what did you give it? You didn't even give it a name. You just said, nah. You instantly just said no about that one. What is this supposed to? A little bunny with a horn? On the outside. One idea for Teddy was that he could equip items that granted him abilities. Some of those were a dragon mask that made him breathe fire, a sword he could fight with, a mage's hat gave him spells, and a wristband great strength. Nyaw. Nyaw. <laughs> we don't do that around here. No, I'm just kidding. 
These are all creatures that were designed very early in production. There wasn't a sudden decision to cut these from the game. They are naturally phased out as we gradually shifted the gamer's genre from an adventure game with horror elements into what the game is today, which is kind of the exact opposite. What wars did these rejected creatures inhabit? I know, right? What's going on here? The core concept of the furnace monster, Hans, is similar to that of Heap. We wanted to create something terrifying out of an ordinary object. A child might see glowing eyes and a huge mouth on the front part of a wood furnace. So we exaggerated this a bit and made the whole furnace become alive. Alive. It's alive. Oh look, Bunny's with us now. He made it. He did it. Okay. We got to see all the monsters. Oh, it's the, uh, the playhouse. Yeah. Talk about the playhouse. Ah, my favorite place. I felt we really connected here, you know? A bit of a breather between the various bad, nightmarish worlds we went to. Also, I was able to talk a lot here. As elsewhere, the developers were concerned about keeping the tension up and didn't want me to say too many things. Also, I kind of get quiet when scared, so it's okay and all. But I liked best the times we had to catch up. I just threw it right out of his face. And he didn't even care. That's what I'm talking about, Teddy. Okay. There's another room. How's it going, this Teddy? This is the reveal. This is where you see your mother for what she is, and the player gets to connect the various monsters and sights through the game. She ain't got no bottle. It's just her with her hand up. They forgot to put a bottle. Okay. I mean, what is this? Welcome to the wood that bit the dust. Oh, so stuff that didn't make it. Oh, man. The baby is going extra fast. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Old sketches for the layout and structure of the scrapped sixth chapter. There could have been an extra chapter. They took it away. Oh, well. This elevator is an example of sadly wasted time since we scrapped everything. It is designed to be a fully functional steam-powered elevator, in theory at least. We could have rolled an elevator! What are you saying? These are concepts that showcase the mood and feel of what we wanted the last chapter of Among the Sleep to look like. The core idea was brass and bronze pipes and tubes lit up by fires on rocky surfaces surrounded by completely pitch black darkness and void. There was also supposed to be a lot of machinery leading up to the old ending where the child would end up in a cauldron, deceived and tricked by the evil antagonist. No, come on, let the, ch the child had to live. Originally, the chase for the mom was a MacGuffin. You did not really find her, and the monsters used her to lure you further into the dreamlands. And we struggled for some time to make sense of this story, especially the playtesters were confused as the story ended without you seeing your mom again. There's two different ways to go. Oh. What does all this steam-powered copper-filled steampunky nonsense relate to, you ask? Well... Proceed to see the old ending of Among the Sleep. Oh, sweet. Let's go. Now, here is something truly special. Let's Want do to it. see what the game almost was at some point? This is an old version of the story's conclusion, and it's been something we have not shown anybody except a few testers in the early days. You might say here, I got to have more fun than in the original ending. <laughs> Come in and see. Teddy, stop being creepy. <laughs> Skin. So Teddy caught us. I can't move. I don't know if I'm supposed to be stuck or not. But I am stuck. Oh, look, my arms are up. Nope, it, I'm pretty sure it's just like a glitch or something. What are you doing? There's not even anything there. I'm guessing, yeah, I'm guessing... There was supposed to be something there for him to turn. And then we get in here. Oh, the pink elephant, buddy! Okay, now what? Now what? What you gonna do, huh? What you gonna do? 
You ain't gonna do nothing, apparently. Eh. What's happening? Am I glitched? Are you kidding me? Oh no, there we go. Took its sweet time. Oh, there you are, Teddy. You're taking your sweet time too. What is wrong with you? Oh, the monster was supposed to be coming out of him. The evil spirit thing. Hello. Oh. Oh no, now it's coming out. Oh, I need a shade. Come on. Come on out now. Yep. You can do it. There we go. Oh. <laughs> Much better. Why well, you still got Teddy's voice? You think his voice would change into like something darker? Okay. There's all that black stuff. Don't do it. What? What was that? What's happening? Oh, yes. Extraordinary. Oh, delicious. <laughs> What are you cooking? Round and round. Spices oh. go in. All the spices is the stuff that we, uh, the baby cherished. Five little animals on a steep, steep hill. A snail that dreams of climbing trees, but never will. A hungry, starving hippo whose gummies are red and her best friend seagull lying lifeless and dead. <laughs> and now for the main ingredient. You can't get in here, Thank boss. You. you did very well. I will enjoy you very much. He got in there. How dare he? I told him he can't. At least tell me what this black stuff is. Am I going to be delicious? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, the, uh, the ending they did do was most likely better than this ending. The original one. I mean, this ending would have been decent if, you know, this game would have been different. But this game was more about a traumatized child. You know, trying to figure things out. You know, realistic type stuff. That ending would have been for, like, more of a monster fantasy type game. Let's go through this. What does this lead to? What are those secret rooms? Under the forest, raided an underworld of tunnels made by giant worms and great halls of crystals guarded by rock giants. A word... That was cut before we did anything more than concepts in a rough right box block out. Was a life-size dollhouse with a myriad of creepy dolls stalking you in the dark. Oh, that probably could have been pretty decent if they would have put that in the game. Our first environments reflected more of an adventure or quest exploring an ominous and threatening world yet more whimsical. Behind the house was a forest. The forest led to a meadow. The meadow into a thorny jungle with odd one-eyed monkey looking things out to get you. If you didn't stay in the light of the luminescent mushrooms. Okay. There's a secret room. I believe there is another secret room too. And we didn't explore the uh, other area. Yeah, here's the other one. Here's this lead to. Okay. Oh, it just leads right back here. Oh, neat. We got to skip all that. Sweet. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so we already we did it all. On the other side. I don't know if the father was actually going to slap her or not. Um or if he was just raising his hand to like threaten or something, but they all that that's in there. 
And I don't know if he was becoming, like, violent or whatever because of her drinking or if he was just a violent. I don't know. Because the father, he was doing pretty well with the baby. He didn't really threaten the baby or anything. Those two had, uh, some relationship issues. One was drinking, one was possibly abusing her. Maybe because he was drinking? I don't know. Eh. They gotta go to family counseling, Teddy. And the baby's gotta see a psychiatrist. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Alright, I collected the last page. That I accidentally forgot to collect. I somehow randomly missed it. I missed one of these. Whichever one it was. <laughs> but I found it. But yeah. I'm pretty sure it's the PJs. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the PJs. Because it's banana PJs. But anyways, yeah, that's going to be uh, Among the Sleep. It was a pretty decent game. And I am uh, pretty happy that they decided not to make Teddy the, the bad guy. Instead, uh, they made it into their own unique type game about child trauma and stuff. But anyways, yeah, this was a pretty decent game. The poor baby, man. Poor Teddy, too. I need outside. But uh, that's going to be the game Among the Sleep. That's going to be the video for the day. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe, like the video, and hit the notification button. Until next time, God bless.